Hi there! Welcome to episode 27 of the Wave Back Music Podcast. Today's episode is Star Tropics for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Enjoy! <laughs> Again, this is the Wave Back Music Podcast. My name is Chris. And I'm Vicky. And we're here to talk to you about some of the most interesting video game music there is. Tonight we check another one off my list with one of Nintendo's earliest attempts to make a game specifically for American audiences. It's got baseball bats, yo-yos, magic, and no, I'm not talking about Earthbound. Don't shove bananas in your ears because tonight we're listening to the tropical sounds of Star Tropics. This one also comes as a listener request from Matt Flamger. Uh, I apologize in advance if, if I mispronounced your name. Uh, so, Matt, thank you for listening, and thanks for suggesting this game. Vicky, why don't you hit us with some history? All right. Star Tropics was released for the Nintendo Entertainment System in December of 1990. It was not, however, released on the Famicom. That's because Nintendo had set out to make a game specifically with American audiences in mind. Development was headed up by Genyo? Genyo Takeda. Genyo Takeda, who is primarily known for his work on the Punch-Out! series and incorporated many references to things like American baseball in an attempt to make it resonate with a Western audience. As far as gameplay is concerned, Star Tropics draws its biggest inspiration from The Legend of Zelda. It's a top-down action-adventure game involving lots of dungeon exploration. What sets the game apart, though, is its unique personality. The game is very goofy, with a very funny script, and it never takes itself very seriously. The game starts with a simple island motif, and by the end, you're fighting aliens on a spaceship. Wow. Spoiler alert. Yeah, it was going to come up through the course of us listening to the music anyway. But yes, by the end of the game, you're in space. (laughs) One of the most memorable aspects of this game came from its fourth wall breaking, specifically uh, in the case of a letter from your uncle. The game's story revolves around you finding your lost uncle, and the game's instruction manual came with a letter from said uncle attached to the back of it, like a physical letter. At a certain point in the game, you had to take that actual letter, get it wet, and it revealed a secret password to operate your submarine. It was ludicrously cool, and it was done way before Metal Gear Solid did it. <laughs> I still have the note myself. I will never, ever forget. Just like, put your uncle's note in water, and I so I, I finally just said, all right, I'm going to do it. I took the note off the back of the instruction manual, and I just poured some water in the sink over it, and 747 megahertz. Holy crap. <laughs> it was That's- awesome really cool <laughs> it's ludicrously cool and in the uh the wii virtual console version um if you, you have to go to the instruction manual thing in the uh, the menu system yeah. and there's an option for a letter and when you poke the letter with the wii remote like the pointer it dips the letter in a bucket and then it shows you a close-up of 747 megahertz it was really really clever this game is so good as for the music, the game was composed by Yoshio Harai. Um, I wasn't able to find a lot of information on him and his career other than he wrote the music for this game and its sequel, Star Tropics 2 Zoda's Revenge. This isn't entirely surprising to me, though, since it turns out that this gentleman was a composer for Tosei back in the day, and Tosei notoriously did not credit any of their game developers in order to prevent poaching, uh, you know, poachers from stealing their talent. So it's likely this guy's written a bunch of music for other great games, and we just don't know. Um, so if you have any information on uh, Hirai's career, let us know at mail at geekade.com, because I am always interested, especially if he happens to be the person who wrote the music for Kid Icarus of Myths and Monsters, which is something that is on my list to figure out. Anyway, another inter- interesting tidbit about this soundtrack is that in the game itself, two of the tracks are actually broken, like corrupted. Uh, there was a glitch in the programming that didn't allow the songs to be played in the game correctly. Uh, it's particularly obvious in the track Main Overworld, uh, which we will get to in a bit. But fortunately for all of us, a gentleman on the internet by the name of Brad Smith went ahead, found these glitches, and fixed them a few years ago, and released the corrected versions into the world, which we will be using uh, here tonight, because they're totally cool, and unless you know about... Uh, Brad's efforts, you've probably never heard the corrected versions before, so thank you, Brad, for your service to 
the world of video game music. So <laughs> let's get started. Uh, track number one is the opening. Um, this is the music that plays over the uh, opening sequence, the title screen. Uh, Vicky, you've started playing this game, right? I have. So a handful of these tracks you're going to know. Uh, did, 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 you, did you watch the super cool opening? I did. Yep. It, just the palm trees <laughs> and the night sky. And it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's pretty nice, pretty straightforward. And it's a nice short track. So let's uh, go ahead and give it a listen. Here is opening from Star Tropics. opening from star tropics for the nintendo entertainment system and it is uh pretty much as as good a job as anyone could ever do setting the stage for uh what is to come um yeah. that was a pretty straightforward opening song <laughs> yeah and it's got that that kind of island tropical beat thing yeah going, which is such a such a prevailing theme throughout this soundtrack uh but i love that little ditty it's uh it's it's nice always makes me smile <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of stuff that always makes me smile, the next track is um, the first of the two tracks that were corrected by uh, Brad Smith, and this had uh, had always bothered me. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a link to the YouTube video in the the show notes. You have to watch it uh, to really hear the, the the difference in these tracks. But this had always bothered me, and I could never figure out if it was done intentionally because it almost lines back up. There's like there's this uh, secondary thing playing in the background, like these little extra beats, and they match up with the music perfectly, and then all of a sudden they just stop. And then they come back in at this very weird moment, and they don't quite match what's going on. And, you know, like I thought maybe there was something wrong with the track I had downloaded years and years ago, so I went back and played the NES game and sat and listened to it. I was like, no, it's it's just wrong, and it's it just doesn't line up with the music anymore. I wonder... What's it so weird? Well, turns out that there was a, just a glitch in the system. So <laughs> this is the corrected version. This is actually what the composer intended overworld theme from Star Tropics to sound like. So let's go ahead and give it a listen. overworld theme from star tropics vicky how do you feel about that one it is a very cute song <laughs> it's adorable isn't it? it yeah it keeps up with the very summery island theme even though the overworld is all green yeah but it's it's still you know i i think you, you when you get that first that first um town in the game is set to mm -hmm. this music isn't it yeah god it's been so long since i played this i, I i'm picturing that in my head and then i was kind of a. Uh, Thinking, wait, may maybe I'm wrong. Nope. Uh, yeah, no, just just walking around in that little palm trees everywhere, talking mm -hmm. to people in the village. It's so relaxing. It's so charming. It's ah, oh, it's it's just wonderful. Love, love this song. <laughs> and that little, it's the 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 part in the background that I was talking about. Man, watch the video of this guy fixing the music. It's it's astonishing to to think that something like this happened and got released and nobody really noticed. It was just like a file got corrupted. It's so strange. But I love this song. This is probably, it might be my favorite song in the game. I, I haven't decided, but it is definitely the song that pops into my head the most. Like anytime I think of Star Tropics, this is the song that pops into my head. It's just a <laughs> pure delight. 
Got anything else before we move on? Nope, that's it. All right, then. Track number three is going to be Dungeon Theme. This is the song that you will hear in this game more than any other song in the game because yes. every single dungeon is set to this song. And I, I can't even be mad at it because it's a good track. It's also, I'm mad at it. Ah, uh, because the game's hard as heck, huh? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so bad at this game. <laughs> it's got such a unique control scheme. Like, the way Mike moves around in this game, like... It, it, I, I, it likens a lot to the original Legend of Zelda in that you can't move diagonally. Yeah. But this game is even more grid based, as in, like, Mike will only move a square at a time. You can't move, like, a couple of steps forward. You are always moving in this grid pattern that's always square by square. And once you get into the platform jumping in the game, that really comes into play because you just you see the squares laid out and you have to jump square to square to square. And you, there's there's no messing around with it. Like you can only go as like you always know how far you can jump. It's this uh, game is ludicrous like that. I have a love hate relationship with games that don't have tutorials. Ah. So you know I was jumping in the water accidentally because mm. I thought I could jump twice or something, and I died. And I'm like, wait, wait, where am I? And I was at like the beginning of the dungeon, and I was so angry. Good old. Classic NES trial and error <laughs> gameplay. Yeah. I remember jumping into the water a lot of times in this game. <laughs> All right, here we go. Track number three, Dungeon Theme. one of the groovier songs of the game it's got such a good groove to it you know yeah it has like the perfect loop too it like does. you wouldn't even notice it's it just it's flawless the way mm -hmm. it connects from beginning to end there and it's it's <laughs> such good music for what you're doing in the game you know um yeah. what's really cool about this is that it's this is the song that you hear when you're exploring the dungeons but there's always going to be in, in typical dungeons there's going to be at least three songs that play. You've got this, then you've got the music when you know you're getting close to the boss. Like, the music actively changes just when you're getting close to the boss. And then there's the actual boss music. And then sometimes there's our next track, which is Hidden Room. But I, I love I love this song. I love the grooviness of it. It's so much fun. And even though by the time I'm done playing through this game, I'm kind of sick of it, <laughs> it is, it, listening to it now, I'm just like, man, I want to play Star Trek. <laughs> I'll give it another try in a little while. <laughs> you should you should totally play this through to the end. Uh there's yeah. so many cool things that happen. Like there's it it never repeats itself. Like you keep going to new places and finding new things and it's and finding new enemies. Yes. Charge at you like those horrible snakes. Oh, the snakes, yeah. Three shots to kill. Yep. What the hell? It's okay. it's you know, just think of it like rhythm. There's like there's always a, a, a great rhythm to get in when you're swinging that yo-yo around and you just, just kill the crap when out I, of things. When I first got a yo-yo, I just, I couldn't handle it. I was laughing for a good 10 minutes. I'm like, what am I going to do with a yo-yo? I play baseball. Why do I have this? <laughs> because it's an old NES game and things yeah. are weird. All right, and speaking of weird, next track is... um. 
has always been a relatively unsettling song to me. This is um, the Hidden Room track, which I think was meant to sound safe, but it really just comes off to me as extraordinarily mysterious. It's a very unique track among the tracks in this game and uh, well worth playing. So uh, here we go. Track number four, Hidden Room. playing through this game have you come across any of these hidden rooms i did i did not like the song i knew something bad was going to happen it sounds when i so heard ominous, this doesn't it yes but it's but the like you find the hidden rooms and usually they're like i oh, always what? had this weird love-hate relationship with the song because it sounds so <laughs> ominous but it's like no i'm going into this room and there's a jar of life healing fluid in here and i need that desperately but I can't tell you how many times I've accidentally died in one of these hidden rooms. Yep. It's Oh my god. Are you That was awful. It's I went brutal. to all like there's two rooms in like the first area and then you can go through the third one and I'm like, oh, "Ooh, more potions or it'll take <laughs> me back to the beginning." And it's just like you jump in it's and then a death you die. Room. It's yep. like a room full of water and skeletons floating in it. You're just like, "You son of a bitch." Yep. I was like, "Oh, no, I was just so screaming. Brutal. So <laughs> brutal. Oh, God. I forgot about that until just this very moment, that room. Oh, I can but picture yes, that so vividly. That's a very ominous song. It really is. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's it's kind of pretty, and it's it, it doesn't sound like anything else on the soundtrack. No. It's totally unique, and it's, it's, it's just wonderful. Okay, let's move on to track number five. This is Boss Area. Now... Like I said earlier, when you're exploring dungeons and you're getting close to the boss, the the dungeon music kind of changes up to become a bit more intense, and it's it's a really cool effect. Um, it's almost like when you're playing the original Zelda and you start hearing the uh, th- the bosses like cries coming through the walls, like the weird noises and whatnot. When you're like in the rooms that are just just right next to it, except this is just I don't know. I remember the first time getting in there, thinking like, okay this is serious and that's how the game kind of steers you towards like okay things are about to get big so prepare yourself (laughs) (laughs) and uh and i would usually try my best to do such so here is track number five boss area fond of the drums in this one like it's it's not like it's not anything all that crazy it's just like it seems like a constant snare hit but there's these like slight changes to the intonation of it that gives it just that little bit more intensity i don't know what are your thoughts on this one this is what like you were saying this is a song where you you prepare yourself because you're going for something big and oftentimes literally big some of the yeah. bosses are pretty huge in this game really I mean, by NES standards. No. (laughs) So, like, eight blocks? Eight by eight? (laughs) Yeah, something like that. There's, like, an octopus boss in the game that you can assume is much larger than what you see, but... (laughs) (laughs) 
I, I really the bosses in this game are really cool looking. I'm I was I remember being very impressed with the bosses playing through this one. Fun fun game. All right, speaking of bosses, we're going to skip the actual boss music because I I don't like it very much. I don't think it's very interesting to listen to. Uh, it's not like it's a bad song. It really works in the situation of when you're fighting against the bosses. But there's there's so much good music in this game. I really only wanted to hit the the best highlights. So we're going to skip right to Victory, which is the music that plays after you successfully defeat a boss. Um, which is also much like the uh, Hidden Room song. It's can be a little bit... Uh, don't get too big for your britches because you can still die. Kind of oh situation. no! Like, you beat the boss. Now you've got to just six. It's usually easy, but it's still possible for you to jump in the water and die. So <laughs> successfully nav- navigate yourself out of the uh, the dungeon back up to the map. So well, can't they just let you have this? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's old Nintendo games and they hate you. <laughs> Track number six: Victory. victory again from star tropics for nes that was a very exciting song i was happy the whole time (laughs) oh god me too it's such a it's such a relieving song especially after some of the bosses the Mm -hmm. bosses can take so long i i can't remember specifically which ones were a pain but i i always remember the boss rooms being relatively intense and like when you finally beat that boss it blows up and you hear this music it's just like Oh, and then just that little twinge in the back, like, I've played Metroid. I need to get out of this room safely. <laughs> it's not over yet. And then you get out to that map music, and you're just like, ah, oh, sigh of relief. But, wow, what a, what a, what a good little song. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's move on to track number seven, Sailing. This is music that plays when you're sailing. Surprise. You would sail? Oh, there's so much in this game. You go on a boat, you ride a dolphin, there's a <gasps> submarine, there's all kinds of stuff. Oh my god. You save a family of dolphins in this <gasps> Is there like a dolphin song? Or is it all in sailing? Like general sailing songs? Well, the um, there's a sailing song, there's another song with your submarine, uh, and I, I took out the submarine song because it's thematically very similar to sailing a lot of the tracks that we're not listening to tonight i i cut because they're they're really good tracks but they're very similar to a a a lot of the other tracks in the game so i really wanted to kind of highlight a bit more of the diversity in the soundtrack um but yes there's there's not only is there great music that plays when you're near the dolphin but the dolphin makes dolphin noises at you as Cute. best an NES can. It's cool. it's fantastic. <laughs> uh, but speaking of fantastic, here is track number seven, Sailing. Thank you. 
right, that was Sailing. Uh, it's such a joyous song. You can see what I mean by it being thematically very similar. Like, mm-hmm. this fits right in with the rest of the songs in the soundtrack. But it also kind of has that very open ocean feeling to it, you know? like Very the, sunny weather song. Yes, yes. The whole, most of the soundtrack just makes me think sunny weather. And none more than I think... Uh, I think this next track is my favorite track of the game. Um, it's uh, This is Miracola. It's another town that you go and visit throughout the course of the game. And this is... This is just absolutely joyous. It's very similar to the overworld theme, I guess, thematically speaking. But there's something really, really delightful about this one. Particularly, there's um a sort of a secondary... It's not the bass instrument. It's just this secondary instrument that has this kind of fading note. Uh, you'll, you'll hear it uh, towards the end of the loop. It's This is such a great song. Um, so let's just dive right into it. Track number eight, Miracola. something about this track that is just very specifically dynamic like it's got these three different parts with these kind of three different feelings that it just this is this is such an amazing composition as far as i'm concerned i (laughs) i love the way that he he uses those instruments that 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 part that part at the end like you've got the the you know your, your basic melody going on and then you've got kind of the beginning chunk of it with the the really extra little duper 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 notes that are going really quickly and then mm-hmm. it kind of changes to a, a more like uh, just just kind of hitting on the upbeats for the second part, and then it goes into that that kind of more droning sound for the secondary rhythm or the the secondary melody. That's just it's controlling the volume. It's just it's so beautiful. It's so well done. Gotta love this track. <laughs> I you haven't gotten you haven't gotten anywhere that plays this song yet, have you? No, nope. I'm still in that first dungeon. Oh, oh, you're still in the first dungeon, so you haven't yeah. fought the Flaming Monkey yet. No, I'm still suffering. <laughs> okay. I feel like once you get through that, you're going to really get the hang of it. It's um, Obviously, there's definite difficulty in the game, but you'll uh, yeah. I, I, you'll you'll get the hang of it. And it's it's so, so worth playing through. Um, it's like, it's really like fun and challenging. It's just, I hate when I die in like <laughs> for stupid reasons. Ugh, yeah. It's the worst. And that will happen. Yep. Okay, our next track is mm-hmm. another really interesting and different track uh, for another really memorable area in the game. This is the music to Shikola Castle, and Shikola is an area in the game that is run and entirely populated by women, hence the Woo! name Shikola. Uh, and it's like a medieval castle, because, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. This game is so weird, I love it, but this is a really cool song, and it's... It's it's really cool because it has the same general feeling and style of this game with all of its tropical setting, but it also kind of throws this uh, medieval castle type song into it. So it's it's a really interesting mix. This is a great song. Here's track number nine, She Cola Castle. <laughs> Thank you. 
a nice, pretty straightforward track. The, the <laughs> very militaristic sounding uh, snare drum thing going on there to kind of give it that extra castle vibe. And how did you feel about this one? It was a very strong song. Like, it left an impression. Yeah, it's, uh, well, I mean, that part of the game leaves an impression. The uh, the Shikola tribe are very uh, fierce warrior women, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they do not take too kindly to your presence at first. Ooh. Um, it's, it's, God, this game is so good. <laughs> it was so good. Uh, I really, it, this is, this is just really making me want to go back and play it. Um, yeah, I, I really like that, that song. Again, a very unique track. Like, mm-hmm. it definitely It was fits... different than, like, it was a little different than the other ones in the game, but mm-hmm. it still felt like it was a part of it. I guess because it still had, like, an island-ish background theme yeah it's definitely still fitting in with like the instrument set and like it it doesn't feel out of place per se with the game which is really a testament to how how well it's composed is that this soundtrack it 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 definitely deviates all over the map um but it still feels very cohesive and speaking of deviations uh we're about to go to space here is uh track (laughs) number 10 zoda's spaceship spacey it was it was cool it was spacey and it starts off intense and then it just hits hits you with those little major chords that makes (laughs) it feel feel really epic (laughs) like seriously you you are on a spaceship you get a laser gun like (laughs) what oh my god it's so crazy and you fight this uh alien overlord named zoda uh okay so the next track we're going to listen to is another song from the zoda spaceship area and I thought this was really interesting to to listen to because it's it's a play on uh, the regular dungeon theme. It's like they kind of inverted a lot of it. it it's, it's really interesting. So let's just go ahead and give it a listen. <laughs> Zoda's Spaceship 2, again, from Star Tropics. there yeah it's, it's kind of like the negative version of the um what's it called the the, the dungeon, dungeon theme. yeah yeah it's like just the inverse it's yeah. it was really in it was it's really interesting i remember because it works so well because at this point in the game mm-hmm. you're like all right i'm on a spaceship <laughs> This is so different from where I started. How did I get here? <laughs> and 
throwing a song in like that that's like almost this weird perverted version of the original one uh it it really just kind of brings that to your attention like holy shit i am so far away from home as a character and i'm so far away from where i started as a player uh th- this song just could not have been more perfect mm-hmm. okay uh let's move on to uh the second track of the game that was remastered uh by our good friend who actually doesn't know who we are um ah. Brad Smith who uh remastered <laughs> these songs he is my hero for doing this this one I didn't even know was uh messed up and if you watch this video neither did he um this song sounds fine in the game uh except it, there's no bass which had never even occurred to me that there would be a bass line but there was actually an entire bass line composed for this song this is where you meet the Argonian children uh, who I won't really spoil the plot too much for you, but they have something to do with your uncle, uh, Uncle Steve, or Is Dr. J. My uh, uncle? A, your, uh, uh, an alien? No, oh but he discovered aliens. God. And uh, these are the children that were being held captive by Zoda, and you save them all in the in the end of the game, and this is the music that plays when you finally free them. Uh, as possibly to you for the first time, being heard with a bass line. And it's quite a unique uh, and almost sad song. It's a very strange little number. So let's give it a listen. Here we go. Track number 12, Argonian Children. children uh and what a what a kind of somber track which is weird uh i it's 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 has kind of an unsettling feel to it uh but it plays over a relatively happy moment in the game which is always really never fit quite right to me um (laughs) but all the ending music that follows is is perfect uh and and i just thought it was such an interesting track to play because it sounds perfectly natural with the bass line, but it also sounds perfectly natural without the bass line. It's, it's really quite unique. But um, if you have beaten Star Traffics a bunch of times and you have never heard the song the way the composer intended, you're welcome. And also thank you to uh, Brad Smith for making that possible. <laughs> uh, what do you think of this one? Um, I did think it was a little spooky, actually. Yeah, it's kind of spooky. That's a really good word for it. Spooky. Too spooky. <laughs> Too spooky, considering you just saved a bunch of children. Oh. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. That, it, huzzah. Yeah. That does not seem like it fits. <laughs> I saved so children. Much. Here's the sad song. It works oddly well. I think there's, like, kind of a, a melancholy to the fact that, like, the children are, like, all that's left of their race or something like uh... that. But I don't know. The overall tone of the game, it was definitely a bit of a downer. But, uh... The next three tracks, which are all part of the ending sequence to the game, uh, are all super fun. So let's go ahead and listen to them. Here is track number 13, Uncle Steve.
you're saving your uncle. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, like, really pleasant in the beginning. Yeah. And then it, like, trails off. It's it's got a very you just saved the day kind of a feeling. Mm-hmm. It's I'm pretty sure that that is like uh, played over a conversation between you and your uncle, and I'm just kind of saying, "Hey, thanks for saving me. Everything is <laughs> good now. Yeah, you beat the game. Yay. Don't sleep bananas in your ears." And uh, <laughs> it's it's a good time. Um, so uh, yeah, lots of fun. Really, uh, not the most dynamic track in the world, but really, what what more do you need? It's just it's just joy. Uh, the next track is called Ending, and this um, <laughs> this ending of this game still cracks me up to this day because it's it starts to zoom out like this music is playing while the camera is zooming out, and it, it starts on the island like all zoomed in, and then it just you know zooms out to the map screen size, and it zooms out to a little bit smaller, and it just keeps on going until you're like way out in space. <laughs> It just, I don't know why it strikes me as funny. I don't even know if it's supposed to be funny, but it always makes me chuckle when I watch it because it's just, it seems so ridiculous. And this music really matches that, just the feeling of this little planet you're on being so small compared to the vast cosmos that you were just in fighting aliens. Uh, Here's track number 14, ending. (laughs) That's that's the ending. Wow, that was nice. <laughs> it's it's quite quite a nice song, quite a nice little track. Build up at the end, like yep. yeah, let's go. It just it it does make you feel like there's more uh, to the story. <laughs> like you just wrapped up this chapter, and that there was going to be more, and there was more. It was a fantastic sequel, Star <laughs> Tropics Two: Zoda's Revenge, and nobody played it, and then they never made another one again Aww. ever. And it makes me so sad. Holy crap! I want a new Star Tropics game. <laughs> I want it so badly. I've wanted it for years. I mean, maybe the, they'll announce that at the uh, the next at, E3. At E3. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe next year. Maybe next year. All we're getting this year is Zelda, which uh, I don't want to complain about. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Yeah, me too. Uh, but, but come on, it has been my prediction uh, for the last like four years, and my hope and dream that a new Star Tropics game is what Retro Studios is working on. That is what I want to be the truth, because they haven't announced anything in a long time, and I don't think they're working on another Metroid Prime. I want it to be Star Tropics, and I want it to be amazing, because this this franchise really deserves the attention. And after Nintendo did such a phenomenal job of reviving Kid Icarus, this is next on my list. This has to come. This has to happen. But I digress. Let's listen to our final track of the night, which is exactly one minute long. How fun is that? Um, This is the ending credits, uh, and this is a really cool sequence in the game because what it does is it draws portraits of some of the coolest moments in the game, uh, but not like using the in-game graphics. They look like drawings of it. It's, It's really, really cool. It's basically a really fun way to relive the entire game you just played, uh, which is super fun. So here is track number 15, Credits.
sounds a little on the somber side, but really it works really well like for looking at it like you're looking at a bunch of memories. It uh, sounds like a graduation song. <laughs> it does. That's a really good point. It does. It sounds like a graduation song. And uh, it... Uh, it kind of feels that way. Cause <laughs> it's like congratulating you for finishing this really difficult game. Uh, it's 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 fantastic. So, I in case you didn't pick up on this throughout the course of the episode, I absolutely adore this game. It it was already on my list of things to do. Uh, we had already scheduled it to be this episode right after Risk of Rain, and then we got the um, the uh, request from Matt, and I was just like, well, as a matter of fact, Matt, we're doing that game next. <laughs> <laughs> It was just such a wonderful coincidence because uh, because I adore this game. It is available on the Wii uh, the Wii Virtual Console as is its sequel, Star Tropics Two: Zoda's Revenge, uh, or Zoda's Revenge: Star Tropics Two. I don't remember how it's listed, but um, they're both really good games. The first one's a bit better than the second one, but they're both well worth playing. Uh, do you have any final thoughts before we close out the episode, Vicky? I'm gonna beat this game next time <laughs> I'm on this show. Just you guys watch. <laughs> By the time we do Star Tropics 2 on Wave Back, she will have beaten the first one. Yes, that that's, a a better, <laughs> that's a better That's uh, a better stretch. <laughs> All right, and that's our show. Tune in next time where we'll be listening to the music of the indie awesomeness that is Bastion. Awesome, deep-voiced uh, announcer not included. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun. As always, we would love to hear everyone's thoughts and memories on Bastion, Star Tropics, or any of the other games we've done. So if you've got any other... Uh, ideas you'd like us to, to do on the show or to share any thoughts and memories you have, send them over to mail at geekade.com. And while you're at it, check out all our other social media channels, which you should totally like slash follow slash subscribe to if you haven't already. And be sure to check out all the other great content we have on our site over at geekade.com. Thank you again for listening. On uh, behalf of myself and Vicky, good night. Good night.